Hey, good morning. Is it nine or 10? I don't remember which. We're going through the mudra cards. The, oh, I have this thing coming. Sorry. The 108 mudra flashcards that go with the book, Mudras for Healing and Transformation by Joseph Lepage. 108 of these cards. We're going through each one, three or four day. Read the cards, try the mudra. There's information on the back about what it's good for, if there are any precautions to keep in mind how to do it, and then we try it. We're on 44 of 108, and what I'm gonna do is when we're all done, we have gone through the last card. Then um, I'm gonna give this to whoever wants it. You just have to basically send me two coffees at Buy Me a Coffee, which is $10, because the, what is it called? First class priority shipping box thing is like $9. So. Just uh, stick with me till the end. And uh, and if you want these, they're yours. Okay. So round 44. A little 432 to get you going. Verity's A, as it's referred to, the true A, not the 440A, which is a Nazi manipulation, but the true A. So let's see what time it is. I don't like to take more than 20 minutes for these. Man, it's really glary in here today, isn't it? So this is Akasha Mudra. It is the gesture of space. Its core quality is to open and make you aware of the vastness of space. And we don't always think about the space in our bodies, certainly as a someone who's been trained in body work and, and person who works in frequencies and energy, we know all about space. Everything is the space. Um, but anyway, from a spiritual perspective, uh, a personally growing spiritual perspective, it's really important to understand the space. You know, um, The space, for instance, between your joints is where the, the electricity for the joint movement occurs, right? You don't think about that, right? You don't think about the space. The joint between the bones in your wrist are very important, uh, right? Because if there is not enough space because of overuse, you get a lot of inflammation, then your space is compromised, and then you get those wrist pains that people call carpal tunnel, right? I mean, you have to think of space, 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 space. Okay, and then each card has a mantra that goes with it that you can uh, recite or recite in your mouth or recite in your head. And the one for this one is, in a space of deep inner listening, I receive guidance for my journey. Okay, then when we turn it over, We've got the things that are good for, and it's especially good for sensing the quality of the suppleness within our bodies and minds. Spaciousness, sorry, spaciousness. As you can see, a problem that I always had, you see they, they print the words right on top of the images. Sensing the spaciousness space is important. Releasing muscular tension from the neck, shoulders, and jaw, supporting the treatment of hyperthyroid issues, well, okay, that's important. Supporting the treatment of hearing problems because you're dealing with space, right? Think of all the space that's in your hearing network. Enhancing intuition, opening new possibilities. There is a caution, it says those with headaches, dizziness, or lightheadedness may choose to practice 
Uh, oh, okay. So also something that I don't go over is each card offers to you a facilitating set of mudras. And that would make sense um, because what comes with the cards is uh, a table of contents. So, and of course this is all gone over in the book. But, you know, if you were doing this mudra, you know, they're saying that you could look to Garuda, Shunya, and Vishuddha mudra, and they would provide similar uh, functional properties. But so they're saying that if you have headaches or dizziness that you might want to try this other one. I'm not going to go over one that I'm not going to go into that, but that's what they're saying. That's what that means. Okay. Now instructions are, we're going to touch the tips of the thumbs to the tips of the middle fingers. And remember in mudra, you're not doing this. You're not doing fingertip crossfit. You're looking for a biomagnetic connection. So you're just going to bring it in. And as you bring it in, you start to feel a zzzz. And just close it. Just close the circuit. Extend the little ring and index finger straight out as much as you can. Okay. Relax the shoulders back. Let the spine be naturally aligned. And then you would rest these on your, depending on how you're sitting, on your thighs or on your knees. This is really powerful. I and it's important to open these out because they then they become antenna essentially. So this is a real powerful one. And you know, and if you move, try different tip uh, alignments and see how it feels different. You know, that feels different than that. All this subtle energy is so important. Okay, interesting. That one was really powerful. All right. Dharma Pravatna Mudra. So this is the gesture of setting Dharma in motion. Its core quality is balancing all of the five elements. And the mantra is attuning to all of the elements essential Oh no, sorry, let me read that over. Attuned to all of the elements' essential qualities, I experienced complete integration in mind and body. And then we're going to read all the stuff on the back. So this is good for balancing the five elements, instilling a sense of integration and harmony at all levels of being, no precautions. So we're going to touch the fingertips of the right hand to the fingertips of the left hand. We're gonna bring the outer edges of the thumbs together along their length. The pads of the thumbs rest under the index fingers without touching them. Well, not like that, but like that. Okay. And form a round space within the palms as if holding a globe. Place the hands facing toward the front of the solar plexus with the forearms resting at the abdomen. So you would put that uh, with, place the hands facing forward in front of the solar plexus. So you'd have it like this. Um, your pinkies would be like against your solar plexus. Okay, that's really dynamic. I can totally feel the whole Ida and Pangala like. Shh, 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 shh. I feel all that cyclical movement. Uh, you know, Ida and Pangala, think of the caduceus, right? Think of the two snakes moving up the spine. I totally feel that being activated. Wow. Woo! Okay. That's that one. Now let's go with um, Ankala Agni, um, Ashala 
Anji Mudra, and I probably said that wrong, I apologize. Gesture of the steady fire. So this is uh, for digestion, and your mantra is, the light of Anji purifies my being, supporting optimal digestion and balanced energy. Okay, this is good for balancing physical digestion, supporting digestion and assimilation of thoughts and feelings, cultivating self-esteem and instilling a sense of direction. Well, that's good, there are no precautions. Okay, so we're gonna make the hands into fists with the thumbs outside resting on the back of the middle finger. Okay, and again, we're not doing finger cross fit. It's a gentle fist and we're just bringing that thumb and resting it there. Touch the inner borders of the tips of the index fingers together. The inner border of the tips of the index fingers, okay? As well as the knuckles of each, oh, okay, as well as the knuckles of each hand, okay? I'm gonna sneeze again. <coughs> oh, sorry. Uh, the tips of the thumbs touch lightly, the palms facing upward. Ooh, man, I'm already feeling the fire element that that activates. And you would rest this against your solar plexus with the index fingers forming an arrow facing upward. Okay. Even though I've got this on the table, I totally feel the fire. Totally, totally wow, this is strong. This is strong. And you know, if you do try to do finger cross fit because you're like, oh, I gotta do this hard, it's not gonna work. You're not gonna feel. I am barely touching all of this and feel the fire. Wow, okay. And let's do one more. And then we're gonna be at 20 minutes. Oh, okay. Uh, Abhaya Varada Mudra. Beautiful. Gesture of fearlessness and granting wishes. So its core quality is fearness. Fearlessness and your mantra is with a greater sense of grounding and centering, I move forward in life fearlessly. So this is something that we have seen uh, uh, Jesus is often represented this way, as well as Buddha. I know that's uh, very confounding for some people who have certain ideas about <clears throat> Yeshua. That's too bad. Balancing Vata Dosha by cultivating grounding and centering. Oh yes, balancing Vata. Supporting the health of the eliminatory system, reducing stress, no precaution. So you're gonna hold the left hand slightly cupped below the navel. Okay, so that's holding it below the navel. I'll just show you here, holding it cupped below the navel. Again, everything is gentle, gentle cup. Uh, hold the right hand slightly cupped at the level of the shoulder with the palm facing outward. So I'll just show you there. So you're cupping below your navel and then you're holding that out. And again, it's gonna be gentle. It's not gonna be like, you're a cheerleader. Oh my God, it's gotta be straight. No, just let it be. Both of them are just natural. So the right elbow is held close to the waist with the forearm perpendicular to the earth. So I'm gonna scoot back and try that. Let you guys try that. Gentle cup right below your belly button. Other hand up, gently receiving. I am Pitta and Kapha. Ooh, but I understand, I can feel how that would balance Vata. Yeah, I really feel a lot coming into the palm of my hand there as I'm doing this. And try it, you know, you're, you, you know, if you're like me, your fingers tend to open a little bit 
and just see if it feels different when you let your fingers open or if you consciously keep them closed. Try both and see if you feel a difference. I naturally, if I'm not paying attention, my fingers open and it feels a little different when they open. Whereas if I consciously try to keep them connected, it enhances what I feel coming in and I feel it coming in right there. And this is the hand that's up. The, uh, the hand that's below my belly button is just kind of like a wet, watery uh, receiver. Okay, so that was 20 minutes. I don't like these to go longer than 20 minutes. Tomorrow we'll do 48. Okay. Moving along, moving along. And FYI, you know, um, a friend of mine wrote a book. Um, and uh, I'm getting up and walking to get the book. A friend of mine wrote a book. And I think that's what we're going to go over next. After we finish the Mudra cards, I think I'm going to read you Emily's book. That's what we'll do next. I'll read you Emily's book, the way that I uh, read you the, uh, the book on the tuning forks. So, uh, she's an athletic trainer, um, but it's, uh, it's about bringing a, a variety of different skills together for self-care self-care on a spiritual level as well as a physical level. So yeah, um, and you don't, I'm not gonna give this book away because it's inscribed just to me. But yeah, after we finish the mudra cards, uh, we'll read Emily's book. So I made that decision. I made that executive decision the other day. So um, yeah, we will proceed tomorrow with the rest of the Mudra cards. Thanks guys.